Hello and welcome to Qbot Update. In this video, we're going to get started with the Godot engine, which is an open source game engine and editor. This will be a short video, so make sure to subscribe for more updates and tutorials in the future. To follow this tutorial, you will need a Windows, Mac OS or Linux computer, but of course you can watch ahead and prepare already on mobile. So let's get started right away. The first thing you have to do, of course, is download Godot. So go to go.engine.org and click the download link either in the navigation bar at the top or the green download button in the middle. From the download page, pick your operating system. Most of you will probably be using Windows 64-bit, so just click that. But for Mac OS, Linux and Windows 32-bit, there is also downloads available. Do not leave the page quite yet. Scroll down instead to Demo Projects and Tools and click the Demos and Examples link. And now you have the two zip files you need to get started. The zip files should be in your downloads folder. I moved them to my desktop for easier demonstration. So just right click each of the zip files and select Extract All. Press Extract and it should be done quite quickly. Do the same with the demos as well. On Mac OS, this is even easier. You just have to double click the zip file. Make sure you don't use the zip files for actual game development. This will just confuse your computer. You need to use the extracted folders. So now we just navigate into the Godot folder. And here we find one exe file, which we just double click. We confirm that we want to run it. So the first thing you see is the project manager, which is pretty much an empty window. So the first thing you want to do is press the scan button on the right. Now this might be a bit confusing at first. Uh, you have to use these two dot slash folders to navigate up. So what you should do is navigate to the Godot demos folder and again. And then once you're in there, you just press open and a list of a lot of demos will appear. These are all example projects made in Godot you can test and modify. What we want to do is to look at one specific example to get started. Truck Town. Open Truck Town by double clicking it. And the first thing you should do is press the play button at the top so you can see that the game actually works. Here just pick one of the trucks and use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move around. You might notice that if you press backwards or down, nothing happens. Your car uh, slows down, but it doesn't move backwards, which is quite annoying. So just close the window and we're going to start by modifying this game example. First, we're going to modify some game design or game rules or game controls, basically. And for this, we want to find a script file in which car behavior is defined. So at the bottom left, we're going to look for a dot GD file, which is related to vehicle controls, car controls, and you can see at the bottom there's vehicle.gd. So double click that and it will open the script file. To get a little more space, press the output button at the bottom. So what we see here is source code which defines the behavior and the controls of the car. Just as a test, let's increase the engine force variable to 4000. And let's just see what happens. This time I'm picking the minivan. And I can kind of make out that the uh, acceleration is kind of crazy. We can see that our changes were saved and applied. So let's go back to the editor. And now what we want to do is that when you press the down button, that the car actually moves backwards. For this, we're going to just look through the source code a little. At the top here, just some constants are defined and some variables and another variable. Here we see the fixed process function with a delta parameter. This is kind of an update game loop. I'm assuming it will be executed 60 times per second, ideally. And we can already see if input is action pressed UI left, then steer target equals minus steer limit. So here in these two lines, we have the behavior of the left button. And we can actually check this by going to scene, project settings, input map. And now we're going to look for UI underscore left. And if we scroll down, we can see over here, it's the left keyboard button. So indeed, this source code here is responsible for what happens when the left keyboard button is pressed. And the two lines below are the same just for the right keyboard button. And it's a uh, if else if else construction where if none of the two are pressed, then steer target is just zero. Further down, we see UI up. So this must be the up arrow on the keyboard. What it does is it uses the function set engine force and it uses engine force as the parameter. This block also says that if the up arrow key is not pressed, that the engine force should be zero. So let's keep going down. And here we have it. If input 
dot is action pressed UI down, which is the down arrow key on the keyboard, then set break one and else set break zero. Now we're gonna just ignore what the function set break does. We're just gonna comment it out by putting a hash in front of it. And what we want this to do is we want this to do the same that arrow key up does, but in the other direction. So we're just gonna copy from line 23, the set engine force engine force function call, and we're gonna insert it under the set break function call, which we commented out. However, if we do this and test the game, you will notice that pressing backwards or down will actually move the car forward. So we need to reverse the reaction to the button press. This we can do by multiplying engine force with minus one. But actually it's even easier than that. We can simply write minus engine force. And if we test this now and press the down button, we can see our car moving backwards. Excellent. So by changing or replacing just one line, we were able to add a completely new feature to the game. I'll just go back up and set the engine force back to 40. Or you know what, let's set it to 100. And the next thing I want us to take a look at is the general look of the level. As you can see, everything is in some kind of ugly shade of green for some reason. So let's take care of that and change that in the Godot editor. So to do this, we need to use the file system file browser down here at the bottom left. And we just double click the truckscene.scn file. Now, in the scene browser at the top right, we need to press world environment. Doing so changes the inspector content. The inspector is at the bottom right. And in here, we just press the little arrow, which lets us edit the environment of the world environment. It's a bit complicated, but it's okay. You just get used to it after a while. And here we can already see there is a color which is green. So we can just turn this off, for example, by pressing this check mark, or we can simply change the color. We simply click in here, and just move around the cursor and change the color. We can make it red, for example, and we can change the energy by dragging the control below the color up or down. So now I'm gonna go overboard with this. I'm gonna set it to approximately 50 and we're gonna just test what this looks like. Yeah, this is a bit uh, crazy and not exactly better looking than before. So let's just close this and I'm just gonna set this to something slightly yellowish and I'm gonna set the energy. I can also use the keyboard to input numbers. I'm just gonna set the energy to one. And if we try it now, it looks kind of nice and overly bright, but at least there's no ugly color shading anymore. The third step in our little exploration of the Godot engine is gonna be editing the level. And for that, we're gonna open the trucktown.scn file, not the truck underscore scene, but the trucktown.scn file. Double click it, and now middle mouse click into the 3D view. Also remember to remove the output so we have more space to look at. So again, middle mouse button, hold, click, and move to rotate. Use the mouse wheel to zoom out, and hold down shift and the middle mouse button to move around the level sideways. This only works while the 3D view is enabled, of course, which you can select at the top of the Godot window. So as a first thing, you should identify the buildings next to the starting position, and you should just click on them and press the delete button on the keyboard and press OK. We're going to delete the roof, we're going to delete the building, and we're going to test the game to see if that had any effect. As you can see, the building is gone, which used to stand next to here. So this is already a simple way to modify the level, but let's go some steps further and let us click on the gray ground, make sure it is selected and not the green grass. Select the gray ground and then use the scaling mode. You can also press the R key on the keyboard, but you can also just press this button above the 3D view. And if you hold and drag, it will change the size of the roads on the whole map. So now get into a side position and uh, use the move mode. You can also press W on the keyboard and move the changed roads so that the starting position has still a road left. Again, press the play button and here we go. I mean, the ro roads kind of fused with buildings and uh, it's kind of weird and everything is hanging around in the air. But again, we're just trying to play around with the engine, get a feel for it make some modifications and figure out how to change the look of the level, how to change the behavior of cars, how to change the, look, the effect of the light. So these are a few of the things you can do to get started with Godot. 
More advanced things to try out would be to edit the cars, for example. So let's go into carbase.scn, double click it, and we're just gonna use the scene navigator to select wheels. And uh, be aware, there is the wheel one, which is a vehicle wheel object, and then under it is a child object, which is, which is called mesh instance. And the vehicle wheel type is for physics, and the mesh instance type is for visuals. So if we change the size of the mesh using the scale mode tool, and if we drag this around, we can make it, for example, ridiculously huge. But if we test it, then you will see that this has no uh, gameplay effect. The 3D model looks weird, the wheel is huge, but it does not change the actual physics. So let's get back to the editor and let us click the vehicle wheel and now we change that and uh, we do this by clicking on radius and just entering the number 0 0.75 and if we test this now you can see this having dramatic effect on the gameplay and the controls so let's just do this for all the wheels so we get something consistent and we're just gonna go with 0 0.75 for all of them and we're not gonna bother with the 3d models for now we're just gonna change the vehicle wheel object types. Right, so the car jumps up a little, but now when we try to drive it, it feels much more natural, even though it doesn't look natural and it kind of jumps weird. Oh boy. Oh, 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 man. But still. Okay, maybe we overdid this with uh, 0 0.75 a little. Anyways, that's how you do it. And we can, of course, also scale the body and move it around just for visual effect. And it will take effect immediately. Now, this is just too silly. All right, uh, I mean, progress has been made. Let us leave Truck Town for now, though. If you go to Scene and then Quit to Project List, we just confirm. Then there are many more other demos to try out. The most interesting one might actually be Platformer 3D. You will find yourself in a 3D platformer kind of game. And in this game we have pretty much the same things we can try to modify. If we double-click Stage and then go to Environment, we can change the ambient light color again. And I'm just going to make it yellowish again this time. This has a dramatic effect on our player character, but at least the level looks a bit more bright now. So as for the gameplay, let's change one thing at least. Let's uh, try to find how, where the jump height is controlled. And for this we just open the player.gd file and try to find something related to jumping. So here we can already see variable jumping equals falls. And if we copy the jumping variable and use search with control F, we can look where it's actually being used. And here we go. If not jumping and jump attempt, so if you are not already jumping, but are trying to jump, then VV equals seven. And whatever VV is, I'm getting the idea this might be the jump strength or velocity. So let's increase this to 70 and just see what happens now. Yep, as I thought. Except it's a bit crazy, so let's go down to maybe 21. This should be like three times of a jump force. So if we jump now, yeah, this looks much more reasonable. And we can pretty much jump through the whole level without having to bother with precision jumping or enemies. Let's reduce this to, let's say 12 though. So, so much for Platformer 3D. What you should also do is try out making the same changes in Kinematic Character 3D, which is another Godot engine uh, demo, for example, which has a 3D level. And just look at these dark colors and this really low jumping. You should definitely try and change some of these. And another interesting project you should try out is the Platformer, which is in 2D. Here you also can change the jump height to reach all the coins, for example. So I hope these first steps in Godot were interesting to you. Please write in the comments if you have any questions or would like to request other tutorials. Please like and subscribe. 
and hope to see you in the next video. Ciao!